So far we have learned that the flow cytometer analyzes a large number of particles in a short period of time by passing particles through a laser in a fluid stream. Each one of these detectors is coupled to a photon multiplier tube, or PMT. The PMT allows us to adjust the amount of voltage that is applied to each detector, basically turning up or down the volume on each channel. If we turn the PMT up, the photon or the dot moves up or down in the plot that we have for that detector. In a real world clinical or experimental situation, we might be looking at patient samples of blood, trying to determine a white blood cell count for the diagnosis of an immune related disease. Since our instrument can determine relative size versus granularity, we can immediately determine different cell types within the blood based on their size and scatter alone. For example, red blood cells, lymphocytes, monocytes and granulocytes. Our first step is to run the whole blood and determine the voltages of the forward scatter and the side scatter, so all particles are visible on the screen. If our voltages are too high, the particles will be off the scale. If our voltages are too low, our particles will cluster in the lower corner of the scatter plot and it will be impossible to determine the different populations. So our first measurement is forward scatter, FSC, and side scatter, SSC. Our next step is to run a blank or an unstained sample. This will help us determine the background of light scattered into the fluorescent channels that we're going to be analysing our fluorescent dyes in. Fluorescent dyes are used to tag certain cell types or properties that identify a cell type from another. Many different parts of the cell can be fluorescently labelled from the surface, intracellular parts, DNA, nucleus, the list goes on. If we are planning on staining our cells with a dye that has a green fluorescence, we want to run a blank sample in the green channel and adjust the voltage to a point where we can see all of the cells. However, we need to keep in mind that if we were to stain these cells and they were to light up, the population would shift to the right. So if our voltage is too high and the stained sample is run, those positive cells are likely to be off scale. So, we use a blank or unstained sample of cells to determine the correct voltages for the size, the granularity and the background fluorescence. Leaving the voltages where they are, we then run positive controls for the fluorescent dyes we are using in our patient or experimental sample. Record the controls and then run our sample. Remember, forward scatter versus side scatter to determine the size and the granularity adjust the voltages so that all the particles are visible on the plot, then set our baseline fluorescent voltages by putting the population in the bottom quarter of the plot so there's enough room for the positives when we run the samples.